Good morning. To our newest class of scholars, welcome to Yale. I'm delighted to join your dean, Dean Cooley, and other members of the Yale community in marking the beginning of your graduate studies at Yale. You know, I was in your position back in 1981. I came to Yale as a graduate student from Stanford. I had worked in the Bay Area for a year. And when I arrived here, I had a pretty clear understanding of the work I wanted to do in graduate school, and I'm sure many of you do as well. But I really had no idea how much Yale would shape my life, both professionally and personally. I also really couldn't have predicted my career trajectory, but that's another story. As a graduate student, I knew I wanted to be a clinically trained social psychologist to study human emotion, and eventually my goal was to have a research group and a laboratory. But I never would have thought that the mentoring I received, the insights, the insights I gained, and the relationships I developed would lead here. In graduate school, I didn't foresee what I, that what I learned would one day help me serve. Serve this wonderful university, a beautiful, complex community of individuals from all walks of life. Ironically, although I came here to conduct research on emotion, and that later led to work on emotional intelligence, my mentors in the psychology department led me to study as well how people process information about health and how to design messages about health that motivate people to protect their health and the health of others. Here we are at the end of a pandemic, I hope, and uh, that experience has come in handy. So each of these lines of work seems so applicable at the present moment but it's all more than I really could imagine at the time I was in graduate school. Well, I don't have to tell you how unpredictable this world of ours can be. The COVID-19 pandemic has reshaped our lives and our society in ways that few of us could imagine. There are many changes we made during the last two years that we're going to keep in place. We call them COVID keepers. Right? Place has permanently changed. COVID-19 has reshaped our lives. Alongside this historic public health crisis, we've also witnessed a, a national reckoning around racism. We've witnessed the perils of conflict and political upheaval. We've witnessed the continued impact of climate change on our planet. In the midst of this kind of turbulence, we know that the world needs solutions from the kinds of research and scholarship you will be conducting at Yale. However, because we've seen how quickly our routines and plans can be upended, we know that it would be unwise to think we can completely map out our paths in life. Instead of being weighed down by uncertainty, though, be open to the possibilities ahead. View each unexpected challenge as a potential to create a change in you and in the communities of which you're a part. As you embark on your studies at Yale, you will gain knowledge and skills that are expected of an excellent graduate education. But you will also have opportunities to develop new interests and explore unplanned avenues of inquiry along the way. Look for those moments. Look for those moments because you never know how significant they will be for you, for your local community, for your country, for the world. 
All of you have come here with ideas of what you want to do, but keep your eyes open for unexpected paths that may unfold for you. Since the beginning of the pandemic, I've been reminded of the importance of being receptive to unforeseen possibilities. Every time I've seen Yale graduate Francis Collins speak about efforts to control the spread of COVID. Many of you know Dr. Collins was the acting, is the acting science advisor to President Biden. He was formerly the director of the National Institutes of Health. And he's one of the country's most respected physician scientists and public health authorities. Now, when he was starting his graduate studies right here at Yale, he was in physical chemistry. And he said he had no interest in medicine or biology. In fact, he thought biology was chaotic and unpredictable. Sorry for those of you going into biology, like our provost and our dean. <laughs> that all changed. He took a course in biochemistry. It inspired in him a deep interest in genetics, and that led him to alter his career paths. That one biochemistry course at Yale as a graduate student became an unexpected turning point in his life. He went on to contribute to the identification of the cystic fibrosis gene. That led to the development of a therapy that could help tens of thousands of people living with this disease. He was also at the helm of the Human Genome Project, which has given us a detailed knowledge about the structure and function of our genes. And in recent years, he spearheaded efforts to stop a pandemic. What unassuming course could change your views or set you on a new path in the coming years? And what could it mean to the world? Not all moments of inspiration will happen inside a library or a classroom or a laboratory or a lecture hall, although I hope many will. But that is why I hope you will immerse yourself fully in the Yale community. I think of recent graduates who often point to experiences outside of their departments that led them in new and fruitful directions. Lucy Armentano, who received her PhD in psychology last year, my department, said that serving as the chair of the Graduate Student Assembly was her most meaningful and rewarding experience at Yale, at least one of the most. GSA, she said, was really formative in her identity as a graduate student. She said, I never really thought of myself as an advocate or leader until GSA, and then being GSA chair was the most incredible thing I've done professionally. It was a pinnacle. Andrew Schwartman came to Yale with a special interest in music pedagogy. He joined the New England Conservatory's faculty after he received his PhD here in music theory. Yet, it was a peer in his graduate class here at Yale that got him involved in the Yale School of Medicine project designed to promote healthy lives among young adults through virtual reality. So in addition to his teaching of music theory, Andrew now serves as the audio director of the medical school's Play For Real XR Lab, crafting a sound environment for virtual reality games and mobilizing his musical prowess in support of public health. I think of a student named Edgar Garcia, whose academic career, as he said, took some unexpected turns along the way. He came prepared to study early American poetics, but then a fellowship at the Beinecke Library changed the focus of his PhD work to 20th century poetics and Latinx literature. Edgar said the resources of the Beinecke made 20th century poetics more materially resonant, and that his English department mentors and colleagues were fully supportive of his newfound academic interests. I think you get the idea. You will find that some of your most memorable moments may happen in even more unexpected places. I was recently reading an article about Patrick Jiroge. He's the governor of the Central Bank of Kenya. 
and he received his PhD in economics at Yale in 1993. And he was talking about the valuable mentorship that he received from faculty members like James Tobin and William Brainerd. But he also was reminiscing about attending the Yale-Harvard football game in 1987. It was cold, he said. It was the coldest day that I had ever faced in my life. There was a sub-zero, it was sub-zero with the wind chill factor. I don't even remember who won. Survival was the only thing on my mind. But survive he did, and he used his Yale education to help foster economic opportunity and improve the lives of people in Kenya and across the continent of Africa. Be open, be open to the options before you. Be curious about the work and interests of your peers across departments. You'll find that Yale fosters the kind of environment that encourages you to pursue what you came here to do, but also offers unexpected ways for you to expand your horizons if you immerse yourself in the intellectual, social, and cultural life of the university as a whole. And don't forget, it's also a place you will make wonderful friends and find lifelong mentors. I just had lunch two weeks ago with my graduate school office mate who sat at a desk next to me for four years in the basement of Kirtland Hall in the psychology department. We've been friends for 40 years. I also met Marta, my wife, when we were both graduate students at Yale. And in 1986, in May, I submitted my dissertation in June, we got married, and in July, I started on the faculty here. So it was a time of great transition, but it was the beginning of the next phase of my, of my wife, my life, <laughs> also my wife. Marta, why don't you stand up for a minute, and just so people can see who you are. Uh, yeah. People think the new dean of Yale College and I are the shortest people on campus, but in fact, Marta <laughs> is really, really wearing that with great pride. Well, in the coming years, you will learn, you will grow, you will find surprising opportunities and challenges. I guarantee that. But what I can't predict is what you will do ultimately with your Yale graduate education, with the knowledge, with the expertise, with the experience, with the wisdom you will gain. What we do know is that Yale graduates have gone on to lead in business, in science, in technology, in the arts, and in the humanities. They are leaving their mark. They are realizing Yale's vision and mission to educate aspiring leaders worldwide who serve all sectors of society. It's going to go quickly. Before you know it, you will be graduating. And you will take your ideas and dreams incubated at Yale, you will take them and bring them to life in novel ways. I'm counting on you to improve the world today and for future generations. I can't wait to see what you are all going to accomplish. And on behalf of all of my colleagues here on stage with me, we welcome you to Yale. Thank you. And now it is a great pleasure for me to welcome you once again by introducing you to your dean, Lynn Cooley. Your dean, now in her second term as the dean of, graduate, of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, 
She's a tireless advocate for graduate students, a powerful agent of change in graduate education here at Yale. Dean Cooley is the CNH Long Professor of Genetics. She's also a professor of cell biology and of molecular, cellular, and developmental biology. And she's the vice provost for postdoctoral affairs. She was, for many years, the director of Yale's combined program in the biological and biomedical sciences. Dean Cooley earned her BA from Connecticut College, her PhD from the University of Texas, and she carried out research with Sterling Professor Dieter Saul here in Yale's Department of Molecular Biophysics and Biochemistry. After postdoctoral training at the Carnegie Institution of Science, she joined the Yale faculty to study cellular mechanisms underlying female and male fertility. She's been recognizes, recognized with a Pew Scholar Award from the Pew Charitable Trust. She's a member of the Connecticut Academy for Science and Engineering and a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. She served on the board of the Genetic Society of America for many years, and she was the president in 2017. In the spirit of my speech just now, Dean Cooley has many other interests. She's an avid member of the Appalachian Mountain Club. She's a student of modern dance. She's a devoted mother of two daughters who are both Yale graduates. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to your dean and one of Yale's outstanding faculty members, Lynn Cooley. Thank you, President Salve, for the, your remarks and that wonderful introduction. Good morning, distinguished colleagues, and good morning to you, new master's degree students, doctoral students, and visiting students in the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. We are thrilled to welcome you as the newest members of our community. You should be proud of all your hard work that brought you here today. With deep gratitude and respect, I want to begin by acknowledging the indigenous peoples and nations, including Mohegan, Mashantucket Pequot, Eastern Pequot, Scaticoke, Golden Hill Pagasset, Niantic, and the Quinnipiac and other Algonquin-speaking peoples who have stewarded through generations the lands and waterways of what is now the state of Connecticut and Yale University. We honor the enduring relationship that exists between these peoples and nations and this land and recognize that this relationship is as much a part of our history as it is a part of our present and future. Graduate students, you were selected here be, to, to be here because you have proven abilities and unlimited promise. You are here because our faculty recognized your intellectual curiosity and creativity, your academic drive and rigor, your passion for discovery and your potential for leadership. You are here because we believe you can make valuable contributions to both Yale and the world, and, we, and because we know Yale can help you on your path to intellectual growth. We're delighted you have chosen to join us. The Graduate School is at the very heart of Yale's mission as a university. Our mission is to educate graduate students to seek answers to life's most challenging questions. As you join us here today, you are setting off on a chapter of your life that will allow you to explore a field in depth, master an area of inquiry, and learn to disseminate knowledge within and beyond the classroom. This year's incoming class in the Graduate School has 535 doctoral students and 219 master's students. Collectively, you represent 54 countries and 39 states of the United States, plus Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico. 
54% of you are international students. You will be working across the graduate school's more than 70 departments and programs. But whatever your area of study may be, proteins or poetry, ecosystems or solar systems, you all share a common motivation. You're driven by the desire to learn more, by the thrill of discovering new truths about our world, and by, by the desire to stretch your imagination and create new knowledge. So reflecting on the composition of this class, I can tell you Yale is fortunate to gather the best students from across the globe, which means if you look around you, you come from all walks of life, backgrounds, and identities. The Graduate School is committed to creating an environment in which all of you can thrive and excel. Partly because we value diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging as a core principle of the university. But also because research shows that groups who embody these qualities are better investigators and smarter thinkers. I had my own eye-opening experience as a graduate student many years ago when I found myself in a laboratory where I was one of a small minority of Americans surrounded by people from all over the world. I learned, learned things like a few phrases in German and Japanese, but I also learned that our, each of our backgrounds and experiences meant we could each contribute in our own ways to the culture of the lab. My lab mates got a kick out of learning some phrases in American Sign Language from me. I still remember when one of the postdocs I greatly admired realized his experiment had crashed for the day. And instead of being forlorn, he grinned at me across the lab and signed, free day, and left. His reaction showed me that the give and take of different languages helped create an atmosphere of trust in which we could comfortably share research ideas and anything else, no matter how crazy they seemed. It also showed me it was okay to take some free time when you hit a temporary roadblock. Both were valuable lessons to me as a young person in a new environment. It can be overwhelming to start this new chapter in your life. You're in a new city, for most of you, meeting lots of new people, and figuring out how to navigate the first steps of graduate school. Trust that you belong here. Trust that bringing your whole self will make everything better. Trust that you will contribute positively to the people around you based on your experiences and perspectives. Learn to listen. Learn when to listen and when to speak up, to put yourself out there and start conversations with people you don't know yet. Over the next few days, be intentional, intentional about meeting new people and be open to building relationships with them. Some of those relationships may lead to, to future collaborations and other may lead to lifelong friends or even marriage. <laughs> the human connections you form, be they personal or prof professional, will sustain you. These human connections can also help you when discussing fraught or complex issues with your peers. Yale is committed to the free exchange of ideas, and it is the foundation upon which the university exists in its educational enterprise. Yale's official uh, statement on freedom of expression, commonly referred to as the Woodward Report, makes the following statement that I quote, by voluntarily taking up membership in a university and thereby asserting a claim to its rights and privileges, members also acknowledge the existence of certain obligations upon themselves and their fellows. Above all, Every member of the university has an obligation to permit free expression in the university, 
no member has a right to prevent such expression. Close quote. Questioning, questioning your assumptions about what you currently know will broaden your understanding of the world, both in the classroom and in your interactions with those you encounter in your daily lives. You have made it to graduate school because you excelled intellectually, but Yale is a place that requires you to be emotionally intelligent as well. You may hear passionate opinions about campus issues, or issues playing out across the country and around the world. Be willing to listen to a range of views and develop your own opinions, even if it means agreeing to disagree from time to time. Disagreement does not inhibit growth or disregard mutual respect. We cannot lose sight of our collective humanity. If you feel a bit unsure about what is to come, this is absolutely normal. In fact, that feeling is the perfect starting point for what you have come here to do. Your time in graduate school is very much about getting comfortable with uncertainty and dwelling at the edge of the unknown. Don't think we have a single word for that state, but we can describe it as a tolerance for ambi ambiguity. The romantic poet, John Keats, called it negative capability, or the capacity to thrive in the midst of uncertainty and doubt. It may sound like an unpleasant state, but Keats and others after him understood negative capability as a positive prerequisite for discovery and creativity. One of our aims in the graduate school is to help you develop the negative capability you need to be comfortable when faced with uncertainty and mystery, to become the scholars and researchers you aspire to be, who can push forward the boundaries of what we know and understand about the world. That search can truly be disconcerting and difficult, but don't insist on certainty where there is none. Nothing great comes out of being entirely comfortable all the time. Some days will just not go as planned. Theories and experiments may not take you where you expect to go. I have learned this lesson over and over again in my time as a research scientist. In fact, the most exciting days in my lab are when an unexpected result leads to a brand new area. Most recently, investigating the function of a gene required for egg development and fertility in females has led us to studying brain-specific protein synthesis in a way that wasn't possible before. I never would have imagined that transition. The network you create and the departmental home you have joined will give you the support you need to survive and thrive in graduate school. You will find that graduate school is very different from your previous experiences. You, are, you are, will be much more responsible for your own education than you ever have been before. Your schedules will be less predictable than they were in the past. This is not an easy endeavor, and it isn't meant to be one. There will be challenges and obstacles ahead, but trust that you will move forward. If you start to think you're in it alone, remember, you are surrounded by mentors and advocates in the form of faculty members, many of whom are here with me today, staff and peers. Just look around the lawn here the peers that you find here, along with faculty and staff, are, are here to support you and offer advice when you need it. Look to those around you for inspiration and guidance and you will find it. You're about, about to embark on a marathon, not a sprint. Pace yourself, be kind to yourself and others, and ask for help when you need it. Though obstacles will exist, great solutions to the world's most challenging problems will emerge from your time here. 
As graduate students, you hold a special place in the university landscape at the intersection of all the research and teaching, teaching happening across campus. You're not simply here to learn from the faculty, you're here to learn with them. Your fresh insights and persistent curiosity are the catalysts to new ways of thinking, learning, and creating. We are eager to witness and celebrate all that you will accomplish. And the world will be waiting for you to come out and share what you've learned as soon as you're ready. The empathy you develop from being immersed in a diverse community will better position you to offer solutions in ways that promote peace and dignity for all concerned. You will become better communicators in order to share your findings with colleagues in your own field, but very importantly, the lay public as well. Recent history has shown us that we all must devote energy toward keep it, helping leaders make decisions based on fact and insight. I want to echo President Salave by encouraging you to participate fully in our community in ways that suit your personal and academic goals best. During your orientation week, you'll learn there are many student clubs, institutes, and organizations to explore. You will undoubtedly be able to find one or more that match your interest. If you're interested in student advocacy, truly improving the lives of your fellow graduate students during your time, the Graduate Student Assembly, or GSA, works closely with my office to identify student priorities and address them as quickly as possible. Lucy Armentado, who President Salove mentioned, was a, an incredible leader during her time leading the GSA. Throughout the pandemic, my office collaborated with GSA representatives to respond to student needs, such as increased stipends, enhanced childcare support, and improved mental health resources. We accomplished these things together through trust, collaboration, and honesty. Student government works here, and I urge you to participate. As you become immersed in your research and in our community, I also encourage you to keep your eye on your future after Yale. Though this is your first official day of graduate school, it is not too early to start investigating and planning your next chapter. Visit our Office of Career Strategy for programs and advice about careers within and beyond the academy. They provide invaluable guidance, professional development, and concrete plans of action for anyone building a career. The Graduate School also has highly accomplished and dedicated alumni who come back to Yale to help you. Later this year, you will be hearing about the Alumni Association's Where Do I Go From Yale? workshop held each spring semester. This will give you a chance to see what our amazing alumni are doing, people who were once sitting right where you are today. They can inspire your work and give you ideas for the future. Until then, tap into our vast alumni network through the Cross Campus platform. It's a great way to make connections with alumni in your fields of interest who are willing to offer advice, ideas, and all the wisdom of someone who has been there. They're great people, and, and they can open your eyes to opportunities you may not have considered yet. To close, today is the start of an exciting journey for all of you graduate students. Seize the opportunities to grow, to challenge yourself, to, and be sure to celebrate not only your own successes, but those of your colleagues and friends. Yale will have an impact on you, but you will also have an impact on this campus and after you graduate on all sectors of society. We welcome you to this community and we look forward to all that's in store for you. Okay, now for a little bit of entertainment and to demonstrate that graduate students do have fun sometimes, I am very pleased to welcome the Graduate School's own a cappella group, 
the citations. Way down, way down in New Haven town lives Mr. Yale, old Eli Hill. No one ever dares to come around just because of his pet Bow Wow. Grr. Woof! Poor old Harvard tries it once a year, always goes back, tied up in black. For when old Yale sings that old bulldog on, he raises an awful row. You Citations, the oldest, the finest, the most melodious, and the only graduate and professional student a cappella group here at Yale. We're so excited to be here with you this morning. We have a few selections, starting with a homegrown mashup on the theme of volcanoes, and we hope you enjoy. When Rome's in ruins, we are the lions, free of the Colosseum. Poison places, we are anti-venom, we're the beginning of the end. Tonight, the foxes hunt the hounds, it's all over now, before it has begun, we've already won. We are wild, we are like young volcanoes, we are wild, Americana, exotica, do you want to feel a little beautiful, baby? Oh, where do we begin the wrong 
trouble or our sins. Oh, where do we begin? The rubble or our sins. And the wall, where do we begin? In the city that we If you close your eyes, does it almost feel like nothing changed at all? And if you close your eyes, does it almost feel like you've been here before? How am I going to be an optimist about this? How am I going to be an optimist about this if you close your eyes? a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord but you don't really care for music do you well it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall the major lift the baffled king composing a little
Thank you so much. I want to make a quick plug here that we'll be having auditions for all graduate and professional uh, school students this September. Please look us up if you'd like to be up here next year, if you'd like to join us. Uh, we have one more song before we go. It's a classic by Queen. We hope you enjoy. Can anybody find me somebody to Oh, love what you're doing to me. Oh, I spent all my years in believing you, but I just can't get no relief. Lord, somebody, oh, somebody, can anybody find me somebody to love? Every day of my life, I worked, I ache in my bones. At the end, at the end of the day, I take home my heart and pay all on my own. I get down on my knees and I start to pray till the tears run down from my eyes. Lord, somebody, oh somebody, oh can anybody find me? Somebody. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried, but everybody wants to put me down. They say I'm going crazy. They say I got a lot of water on my brain. That I've got no common sense. I've got nobody left to believe. I got no feel. I got no rhythm. I just keep losing my beat. just keep losing it's okay. I'm all right. He's all right, he's all right. I ain't gonna face no defeat. I just gotta get out of this prison cell. Someday I'm gonna be free, Somebody find me, somebody find me, somebody to love. Can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Find me, find me, somebody find me, find me, somebody to love. Find me somebody to love. Find me. Somebody. Find me somebody to love. Well, thank you, citations. Uh, you are a versatile group this year, let me say that. Opening with fight songs and uh, closing with Queen and a little bit of your own mashup and, uh, and Leonard Cohen in between. Uh, that you're singing Leonard Cohen makes me feel like I'm not too old for this job, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Let's have another hand for the citation. So I hope uh, that was as inspiring to you as it was to me, and uh, it is now 
my pleasure to introduce you to Sharon Kugler, Yale, uh, Yale's university chaplain. Chaplain Kugler joined the Yale community in 2007, bringing with her over two decades of experience in ministry and higher education, interfaith collaboration, and pastoral and social ministry. Over the past 14 years, she has cultivated a chaplaincy that serves the needs of the richly diverse religious and spiritual traditions of our faculty, students, and staff. For our campus community, she facilitates deeper dialogue, increased access, personal growth, creative educational opportunities, and pastoral leadership. Chaplain Kugler is also a lecturer of interreligious engagement and chaplaincy at the Yale Divinity School. And so I will turn things over to Chaplain Kugler for the benediction. In his work, today is a new day, a piece that is both poem and invitation to young scholars. The 2015 U.S. Poet Laureate Juan Felipe Herrera wrote, today is a new day. You are that new day. Today you are that new time, now visible, now prepared, now filled with eagerness, and hope, you are that hope, the wild-born vista of new horizons. Students, faculty, staff, loved ones, you are each and every one part of a whole new Yale, a new circle of scholars and friends. What Yale was yesterday is not what it is today, or will be tomorrow because of you. Your questions will emerge and then bloom, and your fresh intellect will carry us all to a new discovery, to a new day. As we prepare to take our next steps into these new discoveries, we note our anxieties, but we also lift up our considerable abilities and the remarkable fellowship we will come to share in community. Let curiosity nourish us and compassion guide us as this new creation unfolds. On this day and every day forward, may all that is holy shine upon us and tenderly bless our every breath. May we go in shalom, in salam, in shanti, May we go in peace. This is our new day. Let us begin. <laughs> 